Guys, in this video, let's look at the factors which are affecting wound healing. This is not difficult. Anybody will say it. So, age, right? In children, the wound heal faster. Collagen content decreases with aging. So, that's what makes sense, right? You need collagen for healing. So, collagen content decreases with aging. So, the wounds heal faster in children. Also, people and older people, uh, in older people, the collagen will not be structured properly. Some other factors that affect your wound healing will be malnutrition, you know, vitamin C, virus ions and uh, what else do you need for uh, wound healing? You need wound healing, uh, sorry, vitamin C. Remember, you saw it in the proliferative phase. So, in uh, for wound healing, for this protocollagen to become collagen, you need this protocollagen uh, hydroxylase enzyme, ion and uh, oxygen uh, ions, uh, oxygen and ascorbic acid you need. So, ascorbic acid is nothing but vitamin C. So, you need all this for wound healing. So, zinc deficiency, if you have, again, it will delay the healing of uh, pylonidal sinus. What is this? Okay. Then in diabetic patients, um, wound healing is delayed. Why? Because they have microangiopathy, atherosclerosis, decreased phagocytic activity. They are immune suppressed kind of a thing, isn't it? And uh, because of high blood sugar, they can have proliferation of bacteria. So, in diabetic patients, wound healing is very, very bad. That's why these people land up with... Um, uh, uh, ulcers which don't heal and also they don't feel because of peripheral nephropathy, sorry, neuropathy. Poor Im immune response seen in diabetic patients, very good. So, about diabetics, they have written more here, tissue hypoxia due to atherosclerosis, uh, there is not enough blood supply, uh, uh, they have hypoxia. Thickened basement membrane, uh, so there will be low tissue perfusion, so even whatever comes, that also cannot enter the tissue because tissue perfusion is less. Trauma because of neuropathy. And they can have repetitive trauma, so they don't realize pain, isn't it? And then uh, they can have um, uh, tissue metabolism is increased, relative hypoxia. So, metabolism is more, is it, in them? So, hypoxia will be there, which is relative. And the total failure of defense mechanism, their, their immune response is poor, right? So, failure, failure is important. Failure of uh, defense mechanism, okay? These are some five T's they are saying in diabetics. Then if they are jaundiced or uremic patients, they will have poor wound healing because Fibroblastic repair is delayed. So, you cannot simply say jaundiced or uremic patients, it will be bad. You should say why? Because the fibroblast activity is uh, delayed. Okay. Cytotoxic drugs, if they are taking like uh, doxorubicin, why would somebody take doxorubicin? And if they have malignancies, if they have cancers, then also they can have delayed wound healing. This doxorubicin is a chemotherapy drug, guys. So, what these chemotherapy drugs do, they reduce the number of platelets. You know, platelets are required to form the clot to achieve hemostasis, isn't it? Then they reduce inflammatory cells. So, you need inflammatory cells, isn't it? You need histamine mast cells, you need prostaglandins, you need um, all these things for inflammation, right? So, that you can attract the macrophages, neutrophils, so that they can do the scavenging work and start the healing. So, if uh, these are not there, inflammatory cells, then it is a problem, looks like, okay? You should not have too much, but I think you should have the required amount. Reduced growth factors. Growth factors should not be less. If growth factors are less, how will it produce all this collagen and heal, isn't it? Then uh, decreased wound breaking strength. So, chemotherapeutic drugs will reduce growth factors. They will decrease wound breaking strength. What is this wound breaking strength? Okay, decreased mesenchymal cell proliferation. So, cells you need, right? So, uh, for repair, so if there is decreased proliferation of cells, okay? Generalized infection, if there is infection, will it heal fast? Not at all. Corticosteroids, if you are giving, then it will have uh, anti-inflammatory activity. So, they will have delay of wound. You need inflammation is the first phase, isn't it? After the hemostasis. So, that is not, that means how will it heal, right? So, corticosteroids, if they have, they have problem. Malnutrition, we already told you. Then, Albumin levels must be less than 2 gram per deciliter to have an effect on wound healing. Because you have seen this in metabolism, what happens with this injury, the liver starts making uh, 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 C-reactive protein, fibrinogen, etc. So, these things increase. C-reactive protein and fibrinogen, etc. increase when there is injury and albumin level decreases when there is injury. So, albumin level should be less than 2 gram per deciliter to have an effect on wound healing. Albumin levels should be less, remember. Then only you will have wound healing. So, those were the general factors like age, then malnutrition, diabetes, then uh, albumin levels, malignancy, cytotoxic drugs, jaundice, uremia, all those. Age or if they are taking steroids or if they have, what else did we see? Deficiency of some zinc and all that. Then. And generally, if they have any infection in their body, guys. Understood all the general elements, right? Now, let's go to the local factors. Local factors here. 
See to that low uh, place, to that uh, uh, place wherever the wound has happened, there is poor blood supply. Then it cannot heal, right? Local infection if there is there, then wound won't heal. If the bacterial count exceeds 10 to the power 5 organisms, is like significant, right? Uh, bacteria. Or if beta hemolytic streptococci are present, this is more like necrotizing. So they are telling you exactly how much should be the count, then the wound won't heal, right? So the collagen synthesis will get reduced, collagenolysis will increase. So it is not able to make collagen and whatever collagen is there is getting broken down. So you will have to give antibiotics uh, immediately. Uh, so basically this comes to you, comes again to the same thing. Remember clean wound, dirty wound, contaminated and all that, surgical classification. Okay. Hematoma precipitates infection, right? We already saw this. If there is hematoma, then that can further lead to infection. Like you have seen septal hematoma in your nose, right? You have septal hematoma like this. What will happen finally? This hematoma can get infected and it can lead to septal perforation in your nose, right? You have seen all this in ENT. Uh, faulty technique of wound closure. So, the, uh, you didn't close the wound properly. See, you're supposed to uh, heal by primary intention means you're supposed to, there should be a perfect uh, alignment of these two sides and with suturing and all. So, faulty technique, if that's it, then it will not heal far fast, right? Then tension while suturing. In suturing, what you did, you pulled those two things so much close to each other, you created tension. Then there will be uh, bad healing. Hypoxia, so you need oxygen to heal. You have already seen that in the proliferative state, isn't it? So collagen synthesis is affected by hypoxia. If there is no oxygen, how will it make collagen? Because protocollagen has to be converted into collagen. You know all this already. Smoking, if you do, you will have waste construction. So you will have car elevated carbon monoxide level, which is more like a toxic thing. And also vasoconstriction, enough, not enough blood supply, right? Uh, so then uh, again, that will lead to hypoxia and also uh, the first point here that there is uh, poor blood supply, remember? And then coming to ionizing radiation, if you are exposed to ionizing radiation, <clears throat> there can be endothelial cell injury. So where are we here? <clears throat> what happens if this ionizing radiation, there is cell injury, there is some atrophy, okay, and fibrosis. What else, guys? So here they are talking about some compartment syndrome, etc. So we are done with the local factors, guys. Local factors will be like poor blood supply. These people are smoking, vasoconstriction, hypoxia. <clears throat> then uh, there is some infection here, or there can be uh, a bad uh, uh, primary, bad suturing, tension they have created while suturing. What else? Places of uh, exposed to radiation, hematoma can be there, right? So all that. Okay, guys.